This is Melanie from PolkaDotsAndPixieDust.com and today I'm going to be sharing all about our day in Skagway, Alaska. Skagway was day four for us on our Disney cruise to Alaska, so let's get to it. We had an early start in Skagway, so we headed up to Cabana's right when they opened at 6.30 for a very quick breakfast. We had booked a port adventure through Disney, so we checked in at Azure and waited for our group to be called. The first part of our tour included a streetcar tour through the town of Skagway. I've never really been a huge tour person, but this tour was fantastic. We learned all about the history of the area, much of which revolves around the gold rush. We learned all about the town, both past and present, and what it's like to live in a town that's both very small and very remote. Our guide continued to share interesting facts about the town, like the reason that everything looks the way that it does. There is an agreement with the National Park System to preserve the history of the town and requires any new buildings in Skagway to resemble a photo from the past, which means that Skagway will continue to look this way even as we move more into the future. We were then taken to see the residential areas of Skagway, which is really just a few blocks. Our tour guide talked a little more about what it's like to live there, and it was really interesting to get a feel for how small Skagway actually is, especially considering that it is a port town that a lot of cruise ships stop at. On our way back into town, we learned more about some of the businesses there that had thrived during the gold rush, and we got ready for the next segment of our journey. The streetcar portion of our tour lasted about 35 minutes and then we stopped in town for a quick restroom break and we changed modes of transportation and tour guides. Once we loaded up on the bus, we started our drive into Canada. The journey on the way into Canada is gorgeous. Not only did we have beautiful scenery, but we had another absolutely fantastic guide. He had so much knowledge of the local area and its history and so much passion to share it. We crossed over the Alaska-Canada border and were able to stop and take a bunch of photos. And there were a few other photo stops along the way. Our tour guide helped keep this drive super interesting. He was so excited to share all of his knowledge about the Gold Rush and Skagway. And we all agreed that he should have his own podcast. He was just that good. I really loved how small our group was too. It allowed us to have more time at stops and it never felt crowded. After entering Canada, we had a quick stop for passport control and then afterwards we were dropped off for our journey on the White Pass Scenic Railway. Seats inside are bench seats and they fit too. And we were also given bottles of water for the ride. The adventure starts in Canada and brings you back into Alaska via the White Pass and Yukon Route Railroad. For the first part of the tour, you're given some safety information, and then once it's safe, you're allowed to go outside on one of the little balconies for a better view.
Though not many people use them during our train ride, the views from the balcony were by far the best way to see this area. And we had such beautiful weather that it wasn't even really cold outside. The train does go inside a few tunnels, so if you're standing outside, be prepared for no light in the tunnels. It's a little dark and a little creepy. The train tracks run very close to the edge on some parts of the route, and it also runs on bridges that go directly over water. So if you're afraid of heights, just be aware of that if you plan to stand outside. There is a narrator over the loudspeaker that will give you information about the area and places of note. If you're outside though, it can be very difficult to hear, so although we did love being outside for a good portion of our journey, we did kind of miss out on some of that extra information. About halfway through we saw an old abandoned bridge ahead of us that made us question whether or not we should really be on the balcony. I'm sure it was fine though. On our way back into town we had to stop one more time for passport control to get back into the US. This generally just takes a few minutes, just make sure you have your passport with you so it is ready for them to check when they come through. After the train ride, our tour guide picked us up and gave us the option to go to town or back to the ship. We chose to go back to the ship because we had another excursion in a couple of hours and everywhere in town looked packed for lunch. You can also take the White Pass Railway on your own without needing to buy tickets beforehand, but it's about a four to five hour journey taking the train the entire time. The train departs very close to where Disney Wonder docks, so it's easy to get to and you can buy a ticket that day if you need to. We were glad we had booked the tour though, changing transportation and having different guides kept things interesting and it definitely didn't feel like a full 5 hours. We went back to the ship for a very quick lunch at Triton's and then headed over to our next excursion. We had booked the dog sledding on a glacier excursion through Thamesco, which is located directly across from where the Disney Wonder docks. We got checked in and then waited for our group to be called. Once they're ready for you, you have to watch a safety video and you'll get all geared up, get ready to go in your helicopter. I will do a more in-depth video about this excursion specifically and we'll go over things like cost and how we booked this excursion, but in this video, I'm just going to be sharing some of the highlights. Once you have all your gear on, you'll be separated into groups that will be flying together in the helicopter. My daughter and I were both super nervous about flying in a helicopter for the first time, but the pilot was extremely friendly and professional, and we felt much better once we got up in the air. Our pilot shared a few places to note as we flew over them and it was really cool to see how the landscape changes from sea level to over 7,500 feet above sea level.
once we landed, we got to meet the handlers and the mushers we'd be working with, and we were introduced to the dogs on our team. The musher went over a few rules with us and taught us how to drive the sled. The musher stays with you the whole time, so you don't need to worry about messing up or making a wrong turn. My daughter and I were in our own group, so we got to take turns being the driver and being the passenger. These dogs are incredible athletes, and once we got going, they'd go pretty fast. This was so much fun, and you could tell the dogs were having a great time too. Once we were done dog sledding, we were given some time to talk a little more with the mushers, and then it was time to fly back. The scenery on the way out is just as beautiful as on the way in. One of the best tips I had ever heard when I was looking at Alaska excursions was to get up in the air, and I 100% agree with that statement. You will not see views anything compared to what you will see if you're in the air in Alaska. On the way back, you can even see a really cool view of the Disney Wonder as you make your way back to the ground. After our excursion, we met up with my sister for some free time in town. We had a 12 hour port day in Skagway, so we still have plenty of time to explore the area. The walk from the Disney Wonder to town is about 15 minutes, and there are signs everywhere to help you find your way. We took some time to learn more about the history of the area and then visited the visitor center. The Visitor Center is filled with the history of Skagway and more information about the Gold Rush. We probably spent about a half an hour looking through all of the information inside, and we probably could have spent about another half an hour or so if we had had more time. If I'm being honest, I hadn't really had a lot of prior knowledge about the Gold Rush or really a whole lot of interest in it before this trip, but both of our guides were so fantastic that I was just so intrigued to learn more. They have a map of hikes and short walks in the area if you're looking to explore outside of the town.
and if you have a National Parks passport, you can get that stamped here or grab a stamp on your own to put in your book when you get home. Then we headed over to Klondike Doughboy. This shop is super cute and has all kinds of snacks. But the real reason that people come here is for the Alaskan fry bread. A lot like an elephant ear, this is sweet, fried, flaky, and delicious. And huge. We paid $7 each, but you could easily share this. We also found a coffee shop next door, but it was closed by the time we got there at around 5 p.m. We wandered around the town some more and did a little bit of shopping. There are all kinds of places to eat here, whether you're looking for ice cream or pizza. And the crowds had really died down at this point in the day. They have all kinds of shops here too, including the typical t-shirt shops. They're kind of silly, but a fun souvenir if you're looking for one. It's a very small town and super walkable, and we loved that. We stumbled upon the Back Alley Rock Shop, and if you like gems and precious stones, they have a lot of interesting ones here. The Red Onion Saloon was highly recommended, but we skipped it during lunch because the line was halfway down the street. Maybe next time. There were also other little historical buildings and placards around the town, which was pretty interesting. Our all aboard time was at 7.30, so around 7 we walked back to the ship. Dinner was at Triton's tonight, tried the brie, the filet, and then got a lot of desserts. This is the opera cake, the Grand Marnier souffle, which is the best. And then we also got a little celebration cake brought to us by our serving team. We ended up loving Skagway much more than we thought we would. We loved the small walkable town. The history was fascinating. The scenery was beautiful. And the dog sledding excursion was one of the highlights of our entire trip. We hope you enjoyed coming on this journey with us. See you in the next video.